Section 11 of Lightfoot the Deer by Thornton W. Burgess. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Section 11. A Surprising Discovery, Lightfoot Sees the Stranger, and A Different Game of Hide and Seek. Chapter 31. A Surprising Discovery. Probably there was no happier Thanksgiving in all the great world than the Thanksgiving of Lightfoot the Deer, when the dreadful hunting season ended and he was once more back in his beloved green forest with nothing to fear. All his neighbors called on him to tell him how glad they were that he had escaped and how the green forest would not have been the same if he had not returned. So Lightfoot roamed about without fear and was happy. It seemed to him that he could not be happier. There was plenty to eat and that blessed feeling of nothing to fear. What more could anyone ask? He began to grow sleek and fat and handsomer than ever. The days were growing colder, and the frosty air made him feel good. Just at dusk one evening, he went down to his favorite drinking place at the Laughing Brook. As he put down his head to drink, he saw something which so surprised him that he quite forgot he was thirsty. What do you think it was he saw? It was a footprint in the soft mud. Yes, sir, it was a footprint. For a long time, Lightfoot stood staring at that footprint. In his great, soft eyes was a look of wonder and surprise. You see, that footprint was exactly like one of his own, only smaller. To Lightfoot, it was a very wonderful footprint. He was quite sure that never had he seen such a dainty footprint. He forgot to drink. Instead, he began to search for other footprints, and presently he found them. Each was as dainty as that first one. Who could have made them? That is what Lightfoot wanted to know, and what he meant to find out. It was clear to him that there was a stranger in the green forest, and somehow he didn't resent it in the least. In fact, he was glad. He couldn't have told why, but it was true. Lightfoot put his nose to the footprints and sniffed of them. Even had he not known by looking at those prints that they had been made by a stranger, his nose would have told him this. A great longing to find the maker of those footprints took possession of him. He lifted his handsome head and listened for some slight sound which might show that the stranger was near. With his delicate nostrils, he tested the wandering little night breezes for a stray whiff of scent to tell him which way to go. But there was no sound, and the wandering little night breezes told him nothing. Lightfoot followed the dainty footprints up the bank. There they disappeared, for the ground was hard. Lightfoot paused, undecided which way to go. Chapter 32 Lightfoot Sees the Stranger Lightfoot the deer was unhappy. It was a strange unhappiness, an unhappiness such as he had never known before. You see, he had discovered that there was a stranger in the green forest, a stranger of his own kind, another deer. He knew it by dainty footprints in the mud along the laughing brook and on the edge of the pond of Paddy the beaver. He knew it by other signs which he ran across every now and then. But search as he would, he was unable to find that newcomer. He had searched everywhere, but always he was just too late. The stranger had been and gone. Now, there was no anger in Lightfoot's desire to find that stranger. Instead, there was a great longing. For the first time in his life, Lightfoot felt lonely. So he hunted and hunted and was unhappy. He lost his appetite. He slept little. He roamed about uneasily, looking, listening, testing every merry little breeze, but all in vain. Then, one never-to-be-forgotten night, as he drank at the Laughing Brook, a strange feeling swept over him. It was the feeling of being watched. Lightfoot lifted his beautiful head, and a slight movement caught his quick eye and drew it to a thicket not far away. 
the silvery light of gentle Mistress Moon fell full on that thicket, and thrust out from it was the most beautiful head in all the great world. At least that is the way it seemed to Lightfoot, though, to tell the truth, it was not as beautiful as his own, for it was uncrowned by antlers. For a long minute Lightfoot stood gazing. A pair of wonderful, great, soft eyes gazed back at him. Then that beautiful head disappeared. With a mighty bound, Lightfoot cleared the laughing brook and rushed over to the thicket in which that beautiful head had disappeared. He plunged in, but there was no one there. Frantically he searched, but that thicket was empty. Then he stood still and listened. Not a sound reached him. It was as still as if there were no other living things in all the green forest. The beautiful stranger had slipped away as silently as a shadow. All the rest of that night Lightfoot searched through the green forest, but his search was in vain. The longing to know that beautiful stranger had become so great that he fairly ached with it. It seemed to him that until he found her, he could know no happiness. Chapter 33 A Different Game of Hide and Seek Once more Lightfoot the deer was playing hide and seek in the green forest. But it was a very different game from the one he had played just a short time before. You remember that then it had been for his life that he had played, for he was the one who had done all the hiding. Now he was it, and someone else was doing the hiding. Instead of the dreadful fear which had filled him in that other game, he was now filled with longing, longing to find and make friends with the beautiful stranger of whom he had just once caught a glimpse, but of whom every day he found tracks. At times Lightfoot would lose his temper. Yes, sir, Lightfoot would lose his temper. That was a foolish thing to do, but it seemed to him that he just couldn't help it. He would stamp his feet angrily and thrash the bushes with his great spreading antlers as if they were an enemy with whom he was fighting. More than once when he did this, a pair of great, soft, gentle eyes were watching him, even though he didn't know it. If he could have seen them and the look of admiration in them, he would have been more eager than ever to find that beautiful stranger. At other times, Lightfoot would steal about through the green forest as noiselessly as a shadow. He would peer into thickets and behind tangles of fallen trees and brush piles, hoping to surprise the one he sought. He would be very, very patient. Perhaps he would come to the thicket which he knew from the signs the stranger had left only a few moments before. Then his patience would vanish in impatience, and he would dash ahead eager to catch up with the shy stranger. But always it was in vain. He had thought himself very clever, but this stranger was proving herself more clever. Of course, it wasn't long before all the little people in the green forest knew what was going on. They knew all about that game of hide-and-seek, just as they had known all about the other game of hide-and-seek with the hunters. But now, Instead of trying to help Lightfoot as they did then, they gave him no help at all. The fact is, they were enjoying that game. Mischievous Sammy Jay even went so far as to warn the stranger several times when Lightfoot was approaching. Of course, Lightfoot knew when Sammy did this, and each time he lost his temper. For the time being, he quite forgot all that Sammy had done for him when he was the one that was being hunted. Once, Lightfoot almost ran smack into Buster Bear, and was so provoked by his own carelessness that instead of bounding away, he actually threatened to fight Buster. But when Buster grinned good-naturedly at him, Lightfoot thought better of it, and bounded away to continue his search. Then there were times when Lightfoot would sulk, and declare over and over to himself, I don't care anything about that stranger. I won't spend another minute looking for her. And then, within five minutes, he would be watching, listening, and seeking some sign that she was still in the green forest. End of section 11